Coming up on 5-Minute News. Trump-appointed judge grants special master in espionage case. Suspect in Canada stabbings found dead. And conservative Liz Truss to become new British Prime Minister. It's Tuesday, September 6. I'm Anthony Davis. A federal judge on Monday granted the former president Donald Trump's request for a special master to review documents seized by the FBI from his Florida home and temporarily halted the Justice Department's use of the records for investigative purposes. The decision by the Trump-appointed U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon, who is a member of the far-right Federalist Society since 2005, authorized an outside legal expert to review the records taken during the August 8 search and to weed out from the rest of the investigation any records that might be protected by claims of attorney-client privilege or executive privilege. Some of those records may ultimately be returned to Donald Trump, but the judge put off a ruling on that question. The order almost certainly slows the pace of the department's investigation into the presence of top-secret information at Mar-a-Lago, particularly given the judge's directive that the Justice Department may not, for the moment, use any of the seized materials as part of its investigation into the storage of government secrets at the Florida property. The injunction is in place until the yet-to-be-named special master completes his or her work or until further court order. Even so, it's not clear that the decision will present a long-term impediment to the investigation's progress or significantly affect investigative decisions or the ultimate outcome of the probe, and a separate assessment by the US intelligence community of the risk posed by the apparent mishandling of classified records will continue under the judge's order. One of the suspects in the stabbing deaths of 10 people in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan has been found dead, and his injuries are not self-inflicted, police said on Monday, as they continued the search for a second suspect. Police Chief Evan Bray said Damien Sanderson was found dead near the stabbing sites, and they believe his brother, Miles Sanderson, is injured, on the run, and likely in the provincial capital of Regina. It was the first time police have identified the two as brothers. The discovery of the body came on the second day of a massive manhunt for the pair who are suspected of carrying out a series of stabbings in an indigenous community and a nearby town, which also left 18 people injured. It was one of the deadliest attacks in the nation's history. Authorities have said some of the victims were targeted and others appeared to have been chosen at random on the James Smith Cree Nation and in the town of Weldon in Saskatchewan. They have given no motive for the crimes, but senior indigenous leaders suggested drugs were somehow involved. James Smith Cree Nation resident Daryl Burns and his brother Ivor Wayne Burns said their sister, Gloria Lydia Burns, was a first responder who was killed whilst responding to a call. Burns said his 62-year-old sister was on a crisis response team. Burns blamed drugs and pointed to the colonization of indigenous people for the rampant drug and alcohol use on reserves. Liz Truss has been elected as the British Conservative government's new leader, the party announced on Monday, and she will take office today as Britain's new Prime Minister to steer the country through an acute cost-of-living crisis. 47-year-old Truss, who is currently Foreign Secretary, beat former Treasury Chief Rishi Sunak after a leadership contest in which only about 170,000 dues-paying members of the Conservative Party were allowed to vote. She faces immediate pressure to deliver on her promises to tackle the cost of living crisis crushing the UK and an economy heading into a potentially lengthy recession. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is scheduled to formally appoint Truss as Britain's Prime Minister today. The ceremony will take place at the Queen's Balmoral Estate in Scotland, where the monarch is spending her summer rather than Buckingham Palace in London. The two-month leadership contest left Britain with a power vacuum at a time of growing discontent amid spiralling energy and food costs. 
Prime Minister Boris Johnson has made no policy decision since he announced he was stepping down on July 7, and officials insisted that measures to address the energy cost crisis would be deferred until his successor is in place. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of workers have gone on strike in the UK to demand better pay to keep up with relentlessly rising costs. Inflation is above 10% for the first time since the 1980s, and the Bank of England has forecast that will reach a 42-year high of 13.3% in October. That's largely driven by soaring energy bills, which will jump 80% for the average household starting next month. But it's not clear how Truss's right-wing brand of conservatism, which played so well with party members, who represent far less than 1% of the UK's adult population, will go down with the wider British public, especially those most in need of government relief, to afford essentials like heating their homes this winter. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health, and climate, delivering independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily.